Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, and today we're talking about MIDI grid size. And as always, let's first talk about how changing MIDI grid size works in Reaper by default, and then we'll start improving it. So I got my MIDI editor right here, and if we look down in the bottom here, we can see that my grid size currently is 1 8th, and my grid type is set to straight. So the grid size tells us the size of each grid in relation to a whole note. And if you're in 4-4, that means a whole measure. And we'll get into what each grid type does as we get to them. But for now, if I begin to insert notes, they will be set to 1 8th. If I want to change my grid, I'll just go down here, click on the drop down menu and select say 1 16th. And now I have 16 grid lines in each 4-4 measure. And I just keep going. After a while, put it back in 1 8th, maybe go from straight into triplets by clicking on this other drop down menu. And again, let's change it to half note and write a couple notes notes, whoops, forgot to change the grid type back to straight, and already we're beginning to see the problem. This can get really annoying to work with if you're writing anything other than just straight arpeggios in the same grid size, right? Like you're constantly moving down here, clicking a bunch, getting back to business. I personally die inside with this workflow. So let's use some hotkeys to make this process more fluid. Some of what I'm about to show you are unassigned native actions in Reaper, and some are custom scripts and SWS scripts. So First of all, I can change my grid size using command, control, and mouse wheel. So I'm doing it right now, and I'm at 1 16th, now I'm at 1 8th, and now I'm at 1 4th. So as I work, I can change my grid size without having to move my mouse all the way down here. Ain't nobody got time for that. So this uses an MPL action. So if you have Rio Team scripts installed through Repack, you should have this. Otherwise, check the blog for more info on where to get that. And that's the grid size taken care of. Let's look at type, and here we have straight, triplet, dotted and swing. I changed my grid type by pressing P to get to triplets and hit P again and I'm back in straight. And it doesn't matter what my grid size is. Whatever my grid size is, hitting P will toggle triplet grid, which means my grid size is now two thirds of the value shown in the grid size. For example, 1 8 triplet is the same as a grid size of 1 12. If this sounds like gibberish, I'll get deeper into the grid types in the blog post for this episode, I'll give you more examples. So P to get into triplet and P again to go back. For swing, I can hit O to get into swing mode and I can put in some swing notes. And also when we're in swing mode, we also get this extra slider down here and this is our swing amount. So swing basically means your size is the same as a straight grid, but every other grid line is shifted slightly to be earlier or later than it normally is, which gives your overall rhythm and groove a bit of a wobble, a bit of an unevenness and all that jazz. Yes, pun intended. So at 0%, this is exactly like a straight grid, but I can add a positive or negative swing strength to this to make every grid fall slightly later or earlier than where the straight grid would normally fall. So again, hit O to get back to straight, but let's hit O again to get back to swing. And again, if we want to adjust the swing amount, and this is something I do on the fly, which gives my groove some extra kind of wobble, puts an extra swing on my swing, if you will. And I can do this by holding all four modifiers and moving the mouse wheel. This one is a native action, grid adjust swing strength, MIDI CC mouse wheel. So this can be the mouse wheel or a knob or fader on your MIDI controller if you wish. And then while we're here to toggle my grid type between triplet and swing and straight, I use these actions called SWS slash NF, toggle triplet grid and swing grid. You may have noticed that I don't have one for my dotted grid type and the dotted Dotted grid type basically means your grid size is now one and a half times the grid size. As an example, an eighth note dotted is equal to three sixteenths. And there's an action for this if you wish to set a hotkey for it. I don't because I can get to any dotted note length from the grid sizes I already have. Uh, so for example, if I'm writing in one eighth and I want to insert a dotted eighth note, which is the same as three sixteenths, I use command, control, and mouse wheels to set my grid to sixteenth, and then I just click and drag to fill the three squares, which is equal to a dotted one eighth. So just double clicking will put a 16th note here, but I can also click and drag to give me whatever duration that is a full multiple of this that I want. And I can even hold shift to go to any half amount. So I never really set my actual grid to a dotted value. If you find that you need it, just look for the SWS toggle grid and dotted is an action too. But I feel like I get by with what I got. So to recap, I can use command control and mouse wheel to change the grid size, hit P to get into triplet, hit P to 
get back, hit O to get into swing. And from here, all my four modifiers on mouse wheel will adjust my swing strength. And then hitting P and O again always gets me back to straight as well. You may think a cycle action here would be faster, but I can prove to you in the blog that that is not the case. This is the fastest way. I have done extensive tests. Apart from all of these, for my most common grid sizes and types, I have set exclusive hotkeys. So I can hit number eight to get to one eighth. I can hit six to get to 16th and I can hit three to get to one eight triplets. These are native actions called grid set to whatever value. And these three are what I use. They're my most commonly used grid types. But if you have others you use, you can set hotkeys for those. Some people may choose to add all these actions to their toolbar. But for me, that's a bit too much since again, I hang out in these three main grid types mostly. And if I need to change, I have my mouse wheel actions and all that. So this works fine for me, but as always you do you. Finally, I just want to mention that you can manually type in any grid size in this window. So if I want, for example, quintuplets, I can set my grid size to 120th. So that'll mean there are now 20 grid lines in every 4-4 measure or five in each quarter. Set it to 128 for septuplets and so on. And the cool thing with the MPL action for mouse wheel is also that you can still keep using it even for these weirder values. So with my grid size set to 120, I can still use my mouse wheel to get to 110 or 1 fifth, which is like half notes quintuplets. You can even input values that may musically make not much sense. So for example, you can get into 5-8 grid size. And this may seem useless, but I can actually think of a musical use for these. So for example, I can click here to input notes. So now our grid is uneven. So the second note will be 3 8 if I click and drag. And then once I wrote a few bars like this, I can hit 8 to set my grid back to 1 8. And then I hit a hotkey and shabloinks, it's 1 8 now. This is the split on grid command, uh, which is another unassigned native action. I use command option X for it. And this is also a fine way of writing stuff, especially like chord progressions and stuff. I can do one pass where I just lay out my chords as whole notes or whatever, then change my grid type. This time let's go to one eight triplets and then hit the hotkey, the notes are split. Then I can maybe delete some of these notes to get a cool rhythm like this. And Bob's your uncle. So that's about it for today. I hope you learned some stuff. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll get right to them. Maybe I'll even make a video if it's a really good question. And if you like the work I do, you can also support me by becoming a member of the channel or you can make one-time donations through buymeacoffee.com. All links will be in the description below. Thanks to all our previous donors and members. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.